Hey guys, I wanted to show you this new piece that I got. I ordered it from eBay at $2.02 and free shipping from Shanghai, China. It claims to do NVMe and NGFF SATA SSDs that are M.2 form factor. Just got this fresh from China. Here it is. Right off the bat, I'm actually a fan. It actually doesn't feel like so junky and uh, it comes with a retaining screw and a uh, the retaining piece uh, for the M.2 drive. And over here it has a locking piece and it has 22 by 30, 22 by 42, 22 by 60, and 22 by 80, which is nice. And over here it has the M key. So right here we have a bunch of different drives. We have a SATA NGFF drive. And this is the B key plus M key. And therefore will physically fit into that form factor. Uh, these are two NVMe drives, two different sizes. So this is full size 2280, uh, actually 2260. And uh, this is uh, actually smaller at 2212, um, I guess. That's interesting. Okay. But over here you can see that uh, this is 2242. And the smaller size of it, this is an extender actually, the smaller size actually still does fit right here into the 2230. So I could take, technically take off this extender. So now that we've established it actually holds all the sizes, let's test it out. So the first thing you want to do is actually put the SSD into the drive. There you go. Now we open this Ziploc bag and install it. So these two help retain the SSD in its place. So first you put this little round thing uh, in between the drive holes. Once you push it down you can actually screw it in from the other side. And just like that, it is installed. So now we're going to install it and see if it works and do a speed test. Okay, time to install this in the computer. So here I have my really nerdy testing ring, but it does have an PCIe slot. Let's see if it locks into place. And it fit right into there, no problem. I actually have Windows installed on the Samsung SSD. I'm just going to unplug that and I have Windows installed on that SSD as well. So let's see how it works out. Here we go. Now I highly doubt it could actually boot from there, but we'll see. Yeah, we got an error. This is an HP, so I'll see if I could uh, choose the boot option. And here we have UEFI Bird Source Legacy hard drive. Oh, here we have the Hynix SSD. Maybe it can boot. Okay, so it is seeing the drive, but it can't boot from it. Plugged in the old Samsung drive, and we'll see what happens. It should just boot normally. And it certainly did. And it is reading my NVMe drive in here as an SSD, so that's good. And disk management also found it. Now since we want to text them, test the max speeds, let's start testing. Okay, so I'm going to run a few tests and hopefully it'll help out um, understanding the whole uh, speeds of everything internally, externally, you know, USB 3.0 limitations and whatever. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on. I now have my 12 gigabyte of testing files or 11.3, I should say, a little misleading. You see over here, it is running PCIe 3.0. You can also hear, see here the specifications and it says what not to use with it. Try not to use PCIe 4.0. Okay, let's test to transfer from the Samsung Evo 2.5 SSD to the PCI Express adapter SSD. Okay, I'm gonna try to start them at the same time and paste and start. There we go. And as you can see here, the speeds are 465 megabytes a second and that's PCIe NVMe speeds and 12 gigabyte or 11.3 and there we go we got 25 seconds i'm not sure the best way to test the read speed so i'm going to test it transferring to itself and transferring it to the sata ssd okay so in itself let's try that again so i'm going to transfer it into itself so let's copy these and paste it and run this timer at the same time let's see what happens so it started off at like 800, but then it went down. Now it's going back up. And it's getting really low at 280 at this point. Okay, and we're at 31 seconds. Let's try transferring it the other way. Let's go paste and start the timer again. And we're getting, I guess around the same speeds. Okay, and at 24 seconds. 20 now I'm going to run a quick 
crystal disk mark on it. Okay, so this was the crystal disk mark for the drive that was inside of the adapter, the SK Hynix. Let's try copying to an external SSD and let's paste it and start the timer at the same time and let's see what happens. So this is the uh, speed for the external SSD. It's a WD My Passport SSD. It's averaging at 200 megabytes. And to be clear, um, I made a mistake. It's transferring from the computer's SSD to 1.5 SSD to the external drive. So that's the speed from the regular 2.5 SSD. Now let's see how the M.2 SSD and adapter transfers. It was about a minute and like nine seconds. I stopped the three seconds late. Let's see how the SSD and adapter does. Okay, so now that we saw the read speeds on the 2.5 SSD to the external um, drive, it's time to test the NVMe internal PCIe card to the external drive. Let's start the copy and paste. And we're gonna start this as well. And we're gonna see if it's quicker than the 2.5 SSD. And it's getting like three megabytes slower, or you know, just about the same. And I assume it'll hit the same one minute and nine seconds. I actually got that at one minute, so it was a little bit quicker. We're gonna take that SSD and we're gonna put it inside of the main board SSD compartment and see if it um, transfers at a slower rate or a higher rate. And that's how we'll be able to see if um, it's slower or faster than the traditional uh, M.2 slot. Okay, so I took the SSD and put it into the NVMe spot over here. Powering on the computer. Can we boot from it? Okay, so here we have the Samsung Type-C. Oh, that's my... And then you have Legacy Boot. SK Hynix, let's see if it works. And it's not detected here either, so it could just be that this drive is not able to um, run from this computer. So we're going to test installing a uh, operating system on it and seeing if that works. Okay, so the SK Hynix is showing up the same way as it was before, so that's good. Okay, let's test the speeds again between the SSD that's on the computer, the state SSD, and the uh, NVMe drive SK Hynix that's actually in the computer now. One, two, three, go. All right, we did my best to do them at the same time, and it's transferring at 20 megabytes faster, or about, I guess. We'll see if it finishes before 25 seconds. And it was basically the same. The speeds were the same within the computer from the SSD that's 2.5 to the SK Hynix. Let's check the speed to the external drive. And it's around 200 like the other one, but it did drop a little bit, so let's see. And the other one took about, I think it was a minute and eight seconds. So let's see how long this one takes. Okay, and according to this, it might be a few seconds faster. Yeah, it's about 10 seconds faster, that's nice. I've determined that the speeds are basically the same between the two, uh, whether you're using the M.2 on the actual computer or the M.2 on the PCIe. Let's run the standard test with the SK Hynix inside of the M.2 main SSD M.2 slot on the computer, the NVMe slot. It seems to continue to be the D drive, so let's test it out. And it's just finishing up the test right now, but uh, really the truth is, is that it's basically the same. Um, the read speeds um, were better for the bigger sizes, but worse for the smaller sizes. And the, the read speeds were higher, the write speeds were higher in the actual right now, the way it is right now, but the read speeds were actually lower now. Um, now it could be due to a whole number of factors, but at the end of the day, basically, um, it did a great job. And of course, this is all anecdotal, but yeah. Okay, so. Um, they're basically the same. Now there's a small problem. It does not actually read SATA and GFS drives. SATA drive into there, it doesn't actually read it. Um, it just reads the NVMe drives, it seems. So that is something that was uh, misinformed. Um, and yeah, I mean, most people are using NVMe drives, so I think it's fine, but just good to know. So at this point, the only actual drive that's connected to my computer is this M.2 NVMe drive from PNY connected through the PCIe adapter and let's see if we can install windows on it of course is the installer connected as well all the other drives are not connected let's try it out the drive is showing up over here let's see if we can start to install and when i press next it starts up as, as you can see here uh, windows did install and after reading the instructions more carefully um, on the website i was able to see that it says it does work only if pcie booting is supported and enabled and apparently on this hp computer it is and there we go it's installed now let's try rebooting into the system okay, i'm going to shut it down and turn it back on all right let's give it a shot
and it looks like it's loading something and there we go you can actually boot from this little card as long as it's enabled and supported by your motherboard that's pretty cool anyway thanks for watching i hope this helped somebody